The youngest person charged as an adult for first degree murder in Jacksonville's history is set to be released. Christian Fernandez was just 12 years old when he killed his two year old half brother. The case of Christian Fernandez is a sad narrative that shines a light on the complex and contentious problems concerning juvenile justice, rehabilitation, and the far reaching ramifications of a traumatic childhood. It's a heartbreaking story that took place in Jacksonville, Florida in 2011. Christian Fernandez, who was born on July 12, 1999 in Miami, Florida, is at the center of this tragic story. His life was plagued by adversity, instability, and neglect from the beginning. Christian was born at the age of 12 to Bianual Susana, his mother. As if the responsibilities of early parenthood weren't enough, she was also entangled in a web of substance misuse, marital violence, and poverty. These severe circumstances made it nearly difficult for her to provide a secure and supportive home for her child. Christian's childhood was a whirlwind of neglect, poverty, and exposure to violence. He was eventually placed in foster care, but was returned to his mother's custody when she was released from jail. Christian's life was turned upside down in March 2011 when he was only 12 years old. On March 14, 2011, Jacksonville police received a troubling call from a worried neighbor who discovered a lifeless two-year-old kid in one of their complex's apartments. David Galarraga, the youngster, was discovered unresponsive, and his injuries were quickly determined to be severe and life-threatening. Dramatic, to say the least, sight to see a 12-year-old who looks like a 12-year-old up here in adult court. But we want the public to understand at this point we have no choice. The specifics of this case were horrifying revealing an intricate network of trauma and pain. The enormity of the issue became clear as the first responders arrived on the scene. David had a shattered skull and serious brain injuries and was unconscious. Medical personnel arrived immediately after the cops and worked tirelessly to stabilize the youngster, but the prognosis remained bleak. The discovery of David's illness shocked the entire community. How did such a horrible crime take place in a peaceful apartment community in Jacksonville, Florida? However, the subsequent investigation would reveal a tragic story, typified by the darkest aspects of human existence. The investigation into the Christian Fernandez case was critical in shining light on the tragic events that occurred in a Jacksonville, Florida apartment in 2011. Before we start talking, I have to read you your rights, okay? Because you have the right to talk to me or the right not to talk to me, okay? So I have to go over this paper with you. And then um, when we're finished, if you're willing to talk, then you'll just sign the bottom and I'll sign the bottom also, okay? And then I'll explain to you everything. It was a laborious process that aimed to find the truth behind David Galarraga's serious injuries, an examination that uncovered layers of trauma and anguish. On March 14, 2011, Jacksonville police received a troubling call from a worried neighbor who discovered David Galarraga unconscious in a unit in their building. Responding to the incident, police and medical personnel rushed to the site to find a sad and startling scene. The discovery of David's condition was heartbreaking. The extent of his injuries, which included a shattered skull and significant brain trauma, was instantly apparent. The injuries were consistent with blunt force trauma, indicating that the act was extremely severe. A complete forensic analysis of the crime scene was one of the initial steps in the inquiry. Forensic experts searched the apartment thoroughly for evidence, noting any traces of a struggle, the presence of blood, or any other clues of what had occurred. David Galarraga medical checkup was equally complex. Eight minutes after, I, uh, I, I put her on the phone. Okay. And what phone did you call her from? From my phone. Where's that phone? In my, in our house. What kind of phone is it? Physicians and forensic pathologists worked feverishly to uncover the particular mechanisms that had resulted in the skull fracture and serious brain trauma. Early on in the investigation, suspicion was cast on David's 12-year-old half-brother, Christian Fernandez. Christian was an important player in the investigation because he was present at the scene. The authorities began questioning him about what had happened on that fatal day. Christian's initial recounting of events was incoherent and hazy. As investigators dug deeper, they discovered a number of contradictions and irregularities in his answers. This fueled their suspicions regarding his involvement in the crime. As the investigation progressed, a horrific story of pain and despair emerged. Christian's interviews revealed that he had been subjected to unrelenting abuse and neglect his whole life. He described a profoundly dysfunctional familial setting that included spousal violence, substance misuse, and a lack of emotional support. 
the trauma that Christian had gone through was brought to light. As he peeled back the layers of anguish that had collected over the years, a clearer picture of the events leading up to the crime emerged. For detectives, the Christian Fernandez case was fraught with ambiguities and quandaries. The perpetrator's age was a crucial issue that presented a unique set of challenges. Christian was only 12 years old at the time of the crime, raising the question of whether he fully understood the implications of his actions. The already complex process of assessing blame was exacerbated. No, I, I, I clearly think the decision was a travesty. And then there's this man, the former president yeah, of the I, American I Bar the Association, the former president of Florida State University, and a current oh, professor in the university's law school. This is off the charts in terms of, of overcharging, in my judgment. Raised serious ethical and legal concerns regarding how to address a youngster who had perpetrated such a horrible crime, especially given his own history of abuse and neglect. It was a case that demanded a thorough understanding of both juvenile psychology and the legal system that governs it. The legal processes in the Christian Fernandez case resembled a battleground, with heated arguments clashing over the destiny of a 12-year-old boy accused of a horrible act. The case, which took place in Jacksonville, Florida, in 2011, brought to the forefront a slew of complicated legal and moral concerns that called into question the entire foundation of the juvenile justice system. Christian Fernandez was arrested shortly after his two-year-old half-brother, David Galarlaga, was discovered unconscious and severely injured in their Jacksonville residence. Christian was arrested as a 12-year-old and charged with first-degree murder, a charge that held the possibility of a life sentence without the possibility of parole. The prosecution, led by state attorney Angela Correa, they were adamant that his age should not insulate him from the full ramifications of his actions. This, according to their theory, was not just a case of a child making a regrettable mistake. It was an act so heinous that it deserved harsh punishment to safeguard society from future atrocities. Christian's defense team, led by attorney Hank Cox, rebutted the prosecution's case vehemently and convincingly. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you wish. You understand? If you do answer questions, you have the right to stop answering questions at any time and consult with a lawyer. The defense presented a persuasive case for Christian's age and the impact of his tragic childhood, arguing that these circumstances should be considered during the legal proceedings. They argued for a more rehabilitative and therapeutic environment. Florida's severe regulations regulating the prosecution of children as adults were a significant complicating aspect in the legal proceedings. Any minor accused of a felony as heinous as first-degree murder in Florida was required to sign a waiver and Christian's case was no exception. The case of Christian Fernandez created a severe moral and legal quandary. What is black but I put a cover of blue. Okay, and is it in your room? Mm -hmm. Okay. Christian was asked why he had pushed David twice, to which he answered, I don't know. I don't even know why I pushed him. He also states later that he was angry as his stepdad had done the same thing to him. On the one hand, there was the necessity for accountability in the face of such a heinous crime as well as the idea that harsh punishment would act as a deterrence and safeguard society. Finally, on February 27, 2013, a verdict in the Christian Fernandez case was rendered that did not completely satisfy either side of the difficult discussion. Christian agreed to a reduced charge of manslaughter in a plea agreement. The judge sentenced him to juvenile prison until the age of 19, with credit for time served, which meant he'd stay in jail for another five years before being released. The case sparked heated debate not only in the legal world, but also throughout society. It left both sides of the discussion doubting the conclusion, and reflected the case's complexities in numerous ways. Christian Fernandez was placed in a juvenile correctional institution following the verdict, where he received rehabilitation and counseling. Was that an unfortunate choice of words? I don't necessarily believe it was an unfortunate choice of words. I believe our consideration... But does she have a crystal ball? How would you know you're preventing a future murder? And unfortunately, some of the background and information uh, in this case we cannot discuss. And what about Angela Corey saying she is doing the tough thing? Our role as constitutional officers is not to be tough. The case continued to attract attention to the need for juvenile justice system reform, particularly in Florida, which had some of the harshest rules governing the prosecution of minors as adults. The court proceedings in the Christian Fernandez case were a battleground on which deep legal and moral issues were debated. Christian's case will be remembered not only for the judicial proceedings, but also for the larger issues it raises about justice, rehabilitation, 
and the treatment of children offenders who have overcome significant difficulties. Thanks for watching us. Don't forget to subscribe, likes and comments. See you in our next video.